Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 107 of PD's Awesome Guest Panel. Now, before we introduce tonight's iconic, uh, legendary actress, guest star, I would like to introduce tonight's co-host for this evening. First off, uh, my dear friend and fellow uh, Super Friends fan, Mr. Christopher Patty. Hey, yo. Good to see you again, Chris. Likewise, uh, good to be here. Absolutely. And uh, to have another, our next uh, co-host for this evening, uh, fellow Super Friends fan, and a big fan of, like myself, big fan of Shannon uh, Farnon, and that is Mr. Tyrone Skyberg. What's up, everybody? Great to have you on again, my brother. <laughs> Same here. Now, to introduce tonight's special uh, guest, so let me just say I've been a fan of this Legendary Ladies works for years. Uh, dating back to the Super Friends, and not just Super Friends as the original Wonder Woman, but I'm also a big fan of her work on shows like Love Boat, Dragnet, among others. My guess at this time is Wonder Woman herself, Ms. <laughs> Shannon Farnon. Shannon Great Farnon, how, are you? <laughs> how are you all? Nice to be here. So good to have you on. Thank you. It's good to be on. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, first questions we have for you, uh, Ms. Farnon, is, and that's going to be a typical cliche question, and that is, how and when did you get your first uh, big break uh, start into voice acting? Take us there into voice acting specifically. Um, well, let's say I was prepared for it for many years. I finally got a voice agent and tape going and it took about three years for things to start happening. So there was no big bang blow up. It just gradually started. Oh, okay. And, uh... And before we get to the next uh, question, though, um, because we're we're going to ask super friend questions, but we're going to also cover other work that you've done that, that were live action. Well, I will tell you what I can remember. How's that? <laughs> Not a problem. Anything you can tell us is perfectly uh, okay with us. Okay. Um, Chris, your next question. Any methods or preparations you do for a voice acting role? Well, it's like any other acting role. I mean, if you're given the the part, you need to find out who she is. And if you don't know and nobody's there to guide you, you try to create something that will be memorable. So acting is acting, whether you're doing just the voice or you're on screen or whatever. Interesting. Wow. Um, Tyrone, you had a question. Yes. Uh, my question is, uh, do you... What do you prefer playing a, a hero or a villain character? Mm, wow. Well, when you're doing it on Super Friends, you get to do both sometimes. And wow. that's the best fun. Um, I guess if I had my druthers, the villains usually come in and out, but the Super Friends stay. So I guess I'll have to pick the, the uh, Super Friends character. Wonder Woman. Such an iconic character, too. It was. It was, it was um, a great pleasure to create her. It was a great pleasure to work with the director to establish just what they were hoping for. And I was glad that the network liked it. Let's put it that way. But, you know, we went to work. We didn't know we'd get called back. We didn't know we'd get called back year to year to year to year to year. Ten years later, we were still getting called back. So there was no contract that guaranteed your work. Fascinating, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, before I ask my next question, uh, Ms. Farnon, my, uh, I want to ask, too, because you voice, uh, you were the original voice of Wonder Woman. And in the live action version, it was played by Linda Carter. Did you ever have uh, any encounters with Linda Carter? You know, I have it. The only time we were even in the same room, I think, was at the film premiere when they did the first Wonder Woman film. But I, I really haven't even met her. So it's typical of this business. Okay. Oh. Don't do one. I have a sign out on my patio that says, I'm not saying I'm Wonder Woman, but have you ever seen me and Wonder Woman in the room at the same time? Uh. It'll come to you any minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also wanted to ask too, like, 
like uh, like they show all these like super friends like promos back in the day in Cartoon Network. Uh, yes. That was you doing the voice. Yes, of the and book, that, right? that was more fun than a barrel of monkeys. It was <laughs> such fun because it was comedy. It was it was the superheroes acting silly. It was just wonderful. Oh, I I, I definitely uh, like you know teared my uh, sides uh, watching one of them. I remember the one where it's like the super friends go to the uh, movie theaters. Yes, and so they had a. Yeah, and then you're like, wait, that five dollar bill's not gonna buy popcorn for everyone. And it's like this looks like a job for a twenty. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, really, it was very tongue in cheek, great humor, and it was fun for us to do it because on the show, of course, we had to stay a little more in character. Um, the one, the next question I had for you, and this is what I ask all uh, any actors or actresses that come on the show, uh, and that is the raw emotion question. Like, if you are put in a scenario where, like, you have to be in a scene, and then your fellow co-star, like, have to get into this heated argument, and your co-star goes up to you and says, like, I'll give me an example. If I come up to you and I say, Miss Farna, and I would say that, Miss Farna, because I have so much respect for you, like, complete respect for you. You may call me Shannon. <laughs> Okay, uh, but like, and then I come up to you and say, uh, "This scene requires us to do a, you know, heated argument, uh, like, etc." Now I know it's going to sound very like odd for me to say, but I had an idea to like really enhance this and like enrich this scene. Like, I know it's not, it might sound weird, but I want you to lambast me and lay into me so hard that you can make me cry for real. If you were approached with this type of method, uh, what would you tell that uh, said code star, and what would your reaction be? Cry for real. That takes it one step away from the acting realm. To hurt somebody's feelings for real, yeah, that could be a good performance, but I don't think that's on anybody's mind when they're doing a part like that. Lambasting somebody has to be real. How they react to it is an actor's decision. I see. And the only reason I ask that question is because, like, say, like, if they wanted, like, to make the sell it to the audience, make it believable, make it feel as real as it possibly be. That's yeah. the only reason why I ask. No, it's fine to ask. And I'm just stating that reverse the, the people. For me to take it personal that you lambast me, I have to decide to take it personally. But an actor knows at the beginning they're in a role. So all of those things are decisions. And there's a little thing about making somebody cry. You know who you want to cry? The audience. Yes. That's so if you do it for the audience, they don't have to. Yeah, because the job is already done. Job's done. So the decision to actually cry with tears it's often a good one, and obviously there are roles, and certainly very sad and tragic roles, that, that that's just normal. But the decision to cry from anger basically shows frustration, not anger. If you cry when you are hurt, you're frustrated, but you're hurt first. And, you know, not everybody responds to anger like that. You have to decide. I understand. And uh, now we talked about we're going to cover like a lot of like the, the shows like live action shows you've done. And one of them was I Dream of Genie. And I just want to get your memories on working on uh, I Am Genie. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I Dream of Genie. Pardon me. I Dream of Genie as Helen Wheeler and working with Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman. Well, Barbara and I really just talked in the makeup room. The, the little time we had on screen together was it. It was lovely, but I, our interaction was in the makeup room. But Larry, on the other hand, who had very colorful language, we were together all day long. And part of that time was in a boat, a breakaway boat. So we got to know each other quite well. And uh, the end result was I wound up buying his station wagon and tent trailer. And so we went out to their place in Malibu and they both came out in caftans, he and his wife. And um, I bought their tent trailer. We used it for several years with children. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Incredible. Um, 
I, I loved I Dream of Genie growing up. And we, of course, I used to watch it on Nick at Night, uh, my grandma and my mom, because we. Same. Yeah, it was a good, sh great same, show. Same year. It was fun. It was a fun show. Those were the days when you made your audience happy. Your goal was to, to do something magical. Now, I don't mean that because Genie was a genie, but <laughs> just to make your audience happy. That's what sitcom started out to be. Yeah, making the audience smile. And like yeah. you said, uh, using magic, no pun intended. Using magic. Hearing. Before the bottle comes out, like that the intro was opening, and then it goes, yes, master. I go, boing, and then Like that. Yeah, I mean, what, what more fun could you have? Than exactly. To be Amen. <laughs> But uh, don't forget, Beat Wedge was also, it's a different, but I prefer I, I Dreamy Genie. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I loved uh, the, what, was she the grandmother? I, was she no, not? that was on Bewitched. I'm sorry. Oh, Beat Witch. Oh, oh, it was uh, Elizabeth Montgomery, that's his name. Yes, yeah, she was the Bewitched character. Yeah. Yes. And but it, shows in those days. Yeah, I miss those shows. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I really do. I miss like shows like that, like especially that Brady Bunch. You know, especially I, I love Bewitched too because I was a big Paul Lynn fan. I was a huge fan of Paul Lynn growing up. Well, one of the the producer of the Brady Bunch happens to be a good friend of mine and a neighbor. Sweet. Wow. Yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd Schwartz. Ooh. Hi, Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, you had a question. Um, so what have been some of your memories uh, working on Bonanza as Eleanor Eads? I was the first woman to be killed on Bonanza. Do you remember no. I got killed by Simon Oakland, the actor? And that hadn't been done on Bonanza. No woman had been killed. So that I have that in my memory. <laughs> I was strangled. E even back in that time, it was unheard of, like that a woman got killed on, on TV, on camera. Yeah. So I was a, uh, what do they call it? Groundbreaker. <laughs> yeah. After that, it was okay to kill women. What can I say? <laughs> and I was such a nice person on the show. It's a nice group of people to work with. What, why? Yeah, but why does the nice guy always have to finish last? <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer those questions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> another show you worked on, of course. I mean, I'm a big Rod Sterling fan, especially with Twilight Zone. But you also yeah. worked on Night Galleries. Uh, memories of doing Night Gallery. I got to tell you, uh, that was one of those, I call it my Joan Crawford story. Because my work was pretty much cut out of that. And I learned in the process that that was not unusual, that Joan didn't particularly like to have pretty young girls working with her. Mm -hmm. So the actual role, the more involved part of the role was not even on screen, but working with Tom Bosley and Joan Crawford and, and it was Steven Spielberg's first television show. I mean, he was just, we were the same age. We are the same age. And it was, uh, I didn't know who he was. I mean, few did at that point. I mean, it was just, that was also kind of, you look back and you say, wow, that was the beginning of a lot of people, all of us, except Joan, of course, and Tom. Great. Uh, legendary names, like you said. Like, much like you, very legendary names to work with. Uh, now, uh, Tyrone, you had a question? Yes. Uh oh. What's your memories working on the love boat as Miss Nelson? Well, that's another fun group of people in the cast. Um, I just, it was a fun job. It wasn't taxing. You know, you dress up, you look pretty, you dance with the lead actor in the show and laugh and scratch and the pretty girl. That was pretty much it. It wasn't very challenging, but nice people to work with. Huh. Cool. And another show, and this is, you know, going back to uh, working with Larry Hagman, uh, you also worked with Larry Hagman on Dallas, uh, Memories of Shooting Dallas. You know, I really don't have much to add because it, 
it kind of came and went very quickly. I didn't do much on the show, and that was uh, not memorable, I have to say. I'm sorry. No worries. No, you're, no it's all good. No worries. <laughs> uh, but Chris, you had the next one, and this was we mentioned this earlier in the top of the uh, live recording, and that is uh, the following show. So, Chris, your question? Mary is working on the 1967 Dragnet and as Dorothy uh, Wickersham and Barbara? Um, I did a couple of dragnets. Working with Jack turned out to be a joy because you know he's pretty was pretty stoic. And in real life, he's pretty stoic and serious. And he normally did not do the off-camera that actors do for each other where you stand off beside the camera and do the lines for your scene partner. But he did that for me and I requested it and he agreed to do that. So that was very nice. That's so cool. <laughs> so You're in and out of that show because everything is done with teleprompters and it's a, a fast day, fast day. It was a Mr. Real Joe Friday himself was like stoic in real life too. He was actually living his part? I don't know the answer to that because I, knowing him only on the set, not personally. So I've never heard anything negative about Jack. I mean, I know he was pretty controlling because it was his show, but not, a, no, I didn't hear anything negative about him. It wasn't scary to go work with Jack. What about working with Harry Morgan? L lovely man. Very nice man. Yeah. Now, we're going to ask, uh, this is the part we're going to dive into the Super Friends questions, and we got a bunch of these. Uh, all well, I hope I've got the answers. You people probably remember more than I do. I, I do remember, like you mentioned, that you play both heroes and villains on the show. Like, I still remember to this day a character that you played on Challenge of the Super Friends, a scientist by the name of Dr. Amy Zahn, and you get the credit for this one. It wasn't me. That wasn't you, but they online yeah. it said it was. And you know friend. what? Since you asked me that by with our emails, I checked with Will Rogers, who's written two massive volumes on the show. I mean, massive, fabulous books. He is listing everybody's, the voices you're doing in the show, the who's coming in, who's going out. He's, a, he's, he's literally an encyclopedia of all things Super Friends. He has no idea who did that voice, but he knew it wasn't me too. Thank you for clarifying that because I wasn't yeah. sure because when I w looked online and I saw a voice, it said Shannon Farnon. So I just wanted to get confirmation that, like, you know, that you did. How do those things happen? I have I no know. idea. But I did listen to the show when you sent it to me just to be sure. Right. And it wasn't my voice. Okay. Just wanted to just clarify, like, just get confirmation that. that I'll take credit for it if you want. <laughs> you can take, yeah, we, we'll give you the credit for that. <laughs> um. The, and this is going to lead to the next question, Chris. All right, so take us there. What's some of your memories of your first audition for Super Friends? Well, that was really a memory because I had worked with the director, Wally Burr, on a live action commercial, Flintstone Vitamins. We got along very well. I thought he was a very good director. We even discussed maybe some day working on a stage production together which we didn't that was it you go to work you do your job you go home and then i get a call one day from my agent and she said they want to see you at Hanna barbera to audition for the role of wonder woman i said sure right i said no they do they want to see you I said, wow, that's um, every girl's dream since I grew up with Wonder Woman. So I went in and sure enough, it was Wally Burr who requested it. So I read the script and we went into, I went into the stage and he, I said, look, what do you want to see? So he started to tell me, you got to be strong. You got to be a hero and you have to take off your shirt waist dress and put on your boots. So that was a good picture. So we started in and after a few minutes, we felt like we had it very strongly. And he said, well, now we'll see what happens. We'll send it to the network along with the other 
auditions we have and see what they like. And they bought it. So I got it. To, to, piggy, to piggyback off this question, though, I just want to get like uh, your initial reaction when you found out you got the role as Wonder Woman. Well, I was uh, I was blown away. You know, I'm, I'm thinking all this time, it's, it's another gig. You go, you do it. It's over. You go home, you do the laundry, you go out on your next deal. We really did not know until it just kept going that it was going to keep going. And it did. And it did. Ten years, I did the role. Oh, we have a special question for that at uh, near the end of the interview, which uh, it's definitely uh, one of the questions I'm very proud to like ask on the on the show. And Chris has that one too. Uh, Tyrone, your next question for Shannon. Yes. All right. Let's see. Well, what's some uh, of your favorite moments from Super Friends? Well, I loved the challenge of doing other accents. The French scientist, the little boy playing baseball. Um, just the variety of, it, let's put it this way. There is nothing that stretches an actor more than being on an animation series. Nothing, because they give you one check and they are paying for three voices starring role of course and two incidentals and there was a lot of that so that i found that fun exciting challenging and that's what an actor likes is something that stretches them hmm. wow very cool yep and um i have to ask you because you worked with like an all-star cast i believe michael bell was on there as one of the wonder twins uh, very I, good I, yeah, I had him on my show. He's a wonderful man. Yeah, very um, funny. Yeah, totally. And, oh. you know, the late, I I'm, could be wrong, though, but I think the late, great Gary Owens. Oh, he, he died a long time ago. Yeah, he was another great, like, and yes. you yourself are, like, just iconic. You're a legendary, like. I'm the only one alive, folks. I get an applause for that, right? <laughs> well, I was just thinking about the same thing. I wonder what really happened the other actors. Uh, years ago, for example, Superman, Batman, and Robin. I wonder well, why. First of all, happened. first of all, they were all older than I. Um, oh. So, Danny d died. I'll do it suddenly, very suddenly. He was the first one that did die. We were all in shock, and um, and through time, I mean, Olin Soule was a great deal older than than I. And yet, on a home savings and loan commercial, they had me cast as his wife. I mean, those were the days, you know, you put the old guy with the young girl and yeah. And we became such good friends, such good friends, Owen and I. And you got to work with uh, Casey Kasem too, right? Great guy. Very generous, uh, very involved in charity work for Lebanon. Um, just a Superman. It hurt me badly when he had so much difficulty at the end with, well, there were a lot of accusations, you know, none of which I know about as far as any truth goes, but there were talks, talk, there was talk about him being mistreated, and I don't pay much attention to that sort of thing, but I hope it wasn't true. Lovely man. I understand. And did... Yeah, I, I probably have to rewatch this again, but did Adam West do the voiceover work for Batman? No. Okay. This wasn't no. true of him. Um, you know, perhaps after our show, but uh, it was Olin Soule until, you know, I think I was the first one that they didn't call back after the 10 years. And so I don't know who was doing it then, but everybody was very disappointed, including me. <laughs> oh. Sorry. It's okay. Life's that way. You have to take every job as a gift, just like you take every day. Absolutely. And uh, Chris, you you had a question, right? What was your favorite Wonder Woman line or scene? And and, and before you ask that, uh, before you answer this, uh, Shannon, would you're gonna make it? Would you make us all feel like little boys and just do the Wonder Woman? Can you still do the Wonder Woman voice? Just bring back Superman. Superman. 
listen to me. I'll meet you at the Hall of Justice in 10 minutes. And great Hera. How's that? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> you made me, you, thank you so much for bringing back this nostalgic memory. Thank you. <laughs> I, I watched it and I go, oh my God, that's her. That's so uh, I remember it clearly. <laughs> so do I. I remember it clearly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm heading out to do a, uh, I'm going to Indiana in the middle of July to do an appearance at the Hall of Superheroes Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. So that should be fun. Oh, that's awesome. Like, have a blast. <laughs> yes, thank you. I will I'll give them a little bit of the Wonder Woman childhood. Yeah, break, break them feel like kids again, like you do with us. <laughs> Um, Tyrone, your next question. Yes. Uh, uh, what oh well, like a, a, didn't you like uh, have an idea of like a uh, her favorite line or scene, or it was actually okay, like that's Chris' turn. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that, Chris. Uh, yeah. So, favorite Wonder Woman line or scene? What was it? Or what were they? I didn't have one. I mean, I love doing Wonder Woman, all the lines, all the jokes, even, you know, the moral at the end of the story was often given to Wonder Woman. So I loved it all. Okay. I wish I had a favorite, but you know, they're all pretty good, let's face it. <laughs> Absolutely. There's not one bad line. They were all just memorable and all yeah. stark. Um, again, I apologize, Chris. Sorry about that. Okay, now uh, it's my turn. Yes. All right, so... What do you prefer, live acting or voice acting? If it's a good role, I would have to say live. But you know, it's voice acting is 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 a lot of fun. As I've said, it's a challenge. I've done some auditions that I thought were dynamite and didn't get it. <laughs> but you know, it's it's a pig in a poke. You audition, you give them your best, and you either get this job or you don't. Believe me, I do not take it to bed. It's not an issue. You know, I might look like somebody they divorced and they don't want to deal with it at all. So there's a lot of reasons not to get hired. Oh. Yeah, you never know. Well, I, I, I didn't know. Well, any, anything can happen like that. If you were sitting in a room, especially like if they want you to represent a product, which I've done, oh, so many, many times. Yeah. You have to look a certain way that they feel is going to be believable with that product. So everybody has their own opinion. <coughs> well yeah. said. Um, Chris, your question? <coughs> What teachings or important lessons have uh, left you during your time in the Super Friends series and voice acting Wonder Woman? You want to redo that question into what? You uh, so, like, what mean? teachings or important lessons uh, uh, have like uh, uh, stuck with you during your time in Super Friends, uh, during, uh, voicing Wonder Woman? Be flexible. Number one, be flexible. Trust your instincts, because when a you know you're th everything is thrown at you when you show up to work. There's two hours to read through it at a table. You're given the parts, the extra parts that they want you to do. Trust your instincts. You know there's a director there that can catch you if you go off balance or if you're they want something different. But always trust your instincts. That's the biggest one. Beautifully said, Shannon. And uh, one of the questions I had uh, to, piggy to kind of uh, piggyback what Chris asked, I wanted to ask, what do you think of the impact that not only Super Friends, the series had, but also Wonder Woman has had on new generation of fans? Well, I just think it's wonderful that a woman is represented not only through the area of strength and power, but through a special gift of not killing people, talking through any situation, 
focusing on truth and justice and not brute strength. That's, that's very special in our planet right now because women have and are being put in a terrible position where they don't have power even over themselves. So when you have a superhero that children are attracted to that has all of those things going for her, you've got the best thing going right there. When they start making the male superheroes like that, we might actually not have wars. Agreed. Like, and like you said, like, it's a great, like, image for women, like, positive uh, representation for, like, women as far as heroin. Like, you got your superheroes and you got your heroines that are portrayed in a very positive light. Absolutely. You see little children come into comic conventions all dressed up as Wonder Woman. And it makes me so happy because they see themselves as Wonder Woman. And that's what will change all the craziness on the planet. Amen. And uh, we got a couple of our final questions uh, going on. Uh, so, uh, Tyrone, do you have any final comments or questions for Shannon? Uh, well, I got to say is uh, I have one question about Shannon is about what's – well, it's about my memories for, for her is uh, when I watched you know, her show, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I wonder who's the voice of Wonder Woman? on a screen it says super friends or challenging super friends on it and then i wonder who's the voice on it i couldn't figure it out my research on it so i wonder when i saw it on the convention is that a name her name is there his name is right here so i got it right here you get to my point is that i got an autograph right here so i meet her personally when i was uh, a floor of supercon this was back in 2017. i got photos twice of her with you on it and now i got an autographs and I saw it waiting for so long, but I got it at least because I was dealing with something else. So I finally got it. So thank you, Shannon, for this. It's part of it on my childhood life. You know what I'm saying? I am so glad you like it. I know, but this is my inspiration right here. She, let me tell you, this is the only survivor of Super Friends. I wonder where are the others? Well, but, you know who the others are. <laughs> yeah, like Superman and Batman. It could be, who was the name of his voice of Robin, but I know the name Casey. Casey, Casey, Casey. Yeah, Casey. Yeah, but that's the same guy. He, he also they did a voice of Shaggy of uh, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I love that show. I was like, I, I like all these Hanna-Barbera cartoons. There was also the Super Friends as well, until the middle of the 80s. But I wonder, my question is, uh, who was the other voice of Wonder Woman? Was after, was, uh, call it... After me. Super Friends, or after was me. in the middle? You mean after my my 10 years? It, it, it was in 10 years. I think yeah. it was after in the, my 10 years. 1985, but that's a, another address, was the voice of Wonder yeah. Woman. But my guess, and it's not, it's not an air. But it was in the middle. I think it was, I have a DVD somewhere uh, I, when I look researching it again until like that. Yeah. And, and of course, this is the same thing reminds me of who's the voice of Batman originally in this Super Friends. But now the other guy is not there. But you guessed it, Adam West is Batman. He was in, in a live action TV show. Right. But now he's in the voice. So who's the voice actually? He was there, Batman. But now it's a, another voice actor. It's Firestorm, I believe is his name it was. I don't know. I know that after me, uh, another gal, very nice young lady, is Susan Eisenberg. She did the voice of Wonder Woman in Justice League. Uh, Justice League. That's from... The, and that was the beginning 2000s, but I met is, who's the voice of the, it was in the middle of the 80s, call it Super Friends, and before, call it uh, the Super Powers Team Show or something. This is the final version when Cyborg came. I don't know. Well, I believe the Cyborg is the voice of Ernie Hudson, the, the original Ghostbusters. Maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm totally, I don't know. Well, I found out the research, uh, I found out, but he was the only one at that point. Well, I wonder who's the voice of uh, the other address of Wonder Woman. I forgot his name was, but you are the only one. Like I said, I recognize that your voice. It was my inspiration. So. Thank you very much. Anytime. Thank you.
and I watched it, and I go, oh, I, I wish, I wish you can meet her personally, but you were there, actually, personally. Yes, no. <laughs> yeah, um, exploration right there, so. Thank you. Uh, Chris, uh, your final comments or questions? Um, I mean, I guess I'm kind of curious about uh, what your experience was like uh, doing that one commercial on Cartoon Network. I guess a bump promo, if you will, where uh, you, Wonder Woman and Aquaman uh, were like captured by the Legion of Doom and the rescued by the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> that was I mean, well, it's the same thing as like the popcorn. The, the, it, it's... Just great fun. You can imagine yourself doing it. Exactly. <laughs> great fun. Yeah. Oh, that was such a great poem. I still remember, like, I don't know what they what they said, but it was like there's a really long pause until something fell on one of the uh, Legion of Doom members and they all started laughing. Yeah, it fell on Lex Luthor's head. <laughs> oh, that Legion of Doom. Big bald head. <laughs> After he, like, snickered and then they all started laughing. Oh, that was great. We all love to laugh, right? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Otherwise, the Three Stooges would have never made it. <laughs> well, laughing, is, laughing is the perfect medicine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one, I have a couple of final questions. Uh, one of them, of course, was I asked this for all voice actors and actresses, and that is when, uh, like, because uh, Kurt Douglas in an auto commentary episode of The Simpsons, Kurt Douglas, they said that he hated wearing headphones because it hurt his ears during the recording. I just want to ask you, as a voice actress, did you prefer wearing headphones or no? Well, it depends. If you're in a booth, wearing headphones is a very good idea. Headphones doesn't bother me. I mean, that wearing them is not a physical issue for me. Um, I never wore them in the big booth that we recorded in, in Super Friends. I don't remember anybody wearing them there. It wasn't necessary. We each had our own mic. But when you're working alone in a booth, um, or if you're there's a lot of voice work that's done by telephone. We call it phone. We're, you're talking to somebody who's not there, and, and the headphones are essential. Phoning in? Pardon? Phoning it in? I still didn't get what you I said. You said phoning uh, so in. It's like phoning it in. Well, that's a different expression. It means something else. Phoning it in to an actor is, gee, you didn't put your heart in it, did you? You just phoned it in. But there's work, voice over work, that is actually done because some, the advertising company or whatever that hired you is in New York and you're in LA. And for them, it's cheaper to let you work here in a booth with a director in a studio. That's what I was talking about. Makes sense. And yeah. uh, I got access to, like, and this is probably my fun question to ask, and that is, whenever I'm not on a strict military, almost like, diet because there's times where i usually like i would fast like until dinner time but when i'm not i am an absolute foodie and I, and you worked on so many production companies including voice acting and live action so i was just wondering which had the best catering scene and what was your favorite meal in catering <laughs> <laughs> you come up with some fun questions but uh you know the catering out here in la is it's pretty pretty sensational so they all have great food. They all have great choices. Only once or twice in my career, which was just, I started the professionally in 1964 with all you guys, just babies, where they served pizza. And that was a bummer. I mean, I, I, I'm all for a piece of pizza on occasion, but when you're working hard all day, you don't just offer an actor pizza. No. That's... Tacky, as far as I'm concerned. You need choices. Salad and fish and, you know, things to eat that are good for you. Yeah, chicken. Oh, yeah. Um, did you get to, like, uh, like for Hannah Barbera, they had catering, right? Working we didn't on... need catering. Okay. We, we did a two-hour uh, table read, and then we broke for a little while, you know, you could get a snack or whatever. And we went right into a, a recording session. So we were there four hours, so they don't have to feed you during that time. We had the usual stuff, the donuts and coffee and things that are available, but you know, you all have to keep your girlish figure. So you gotta watch that stuff. 
Um, the final question I have for you before we conclude is, what's next for Shannon uh, for a uh, Farnon? And by, and this is the part of my show which is an open forum, so you can say anything, you can talk, hi, promote anything you want. I am passing the proverbial microphone <laughs> onto you. The floor is yours, Miss Farnon. Well, I've already mentioned I'm heading to Indiana the middle of July. And um, recently, I just, actually the last few weeks, I've gotten two new agents, a new theatrical agent and a new print agent. And I do all those areas of the business. So I've been paperwork nightmare with the two agents and hopefully they'll get something wonderful for me. Very and cool. you just remember, the writers are on strike. The actors may go out next. So right now, you kind of get all your ducks in a row and make sure everything is updated and that you're ready to roll when they're ready to go. Well said. So very quiet. Very uh, cool. I just want to... I don't think we can always, like, ultimately replace humans in the end because, yeah, I've actually tried uh, using an AI bot to uh, write a story for me, and it's just not the same as having a person do it. Well, it's, it's... we have that already dealt with, I think, in the contracts. That is insisting that the writer do his own work and not use AI. It's pretty, pretty, they don't have the creativity. A, a robot, an AI product will never have the feelings you have. They'll never have the creativity you have. All they do is spit back information that has been given to them from the information available. Cobbled together through experiences and expectations. So please keep on writing. <laughs> yes. um, I just want to say before we conclude, uh, Shannon, that thank you for not only an amazing interview, and I'm going to edit this as soon as we're done, so that way I can give you a copy of it ASAP. Absolutely. Um, and I just want to say, too, I'm going to sound like a broken record uh, when I say this, but you have this. I know, like, you don't have, like, it's unfortunate you don't have these you know, superpowers like Wonder Woman has, but you do have this incredible gift. You can take a 30-something-year-old fan and bring him way down here and make him feel like that seven-year-old again watching Super Friends. Wow. Thank you so much, Peter. That's very nice to say. Thank you. Absolutely. And one last thing before we conclude, and I feel like you deserve this. I waited since I was seven to do this. And that is thank you, Shannon. Thank, oh, thank Shannon. you, Shannon. Thank you, <laughs> Shannon. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, well, guys, on the, on the count of three, let's do it together, all three of us. One, okay. two, three. <laughs> Yes. Woman. Thank you so much. Woman. Thank you so much, thank Shannon. You. Thank, thank you guys for uh, helping me co-host this episode. Thank you, everyone. And before we conclude, and before we actually end it, uh, yeah, I'll just say thank you for lending your voice. Uh, your portrayal has had a significant impact on the superhero genre as Wonder Woman continues to be a beloved and influential character in popular culture. Your well, contribution is like, like bringing this empowering and inspiring character to life. Well, has of course uh, since like. Uh, way back then and undoubtedly he left a lasting impression on the fans and we appreciate your talent and dedication in, in bringing Wonder Woman on screen it's been an honor for me to do it and that's all I can say in short this will be the final thing I say and that is in short you are an inspiration Shannon thank you same here uh, my inspiration I was born in the 80s until I was like yes that's my Wonder Woman right there and I go <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Anytime. You all okay. have you all have a great night and I will post this as soon as possible. Okay, I'd love to see it. We'll put it on my Facebook page. Absolutely. I yeah. hope I meet you all at a supercon one of these days. Oh, I hope <laughs> to meet you. I, to, I wish well, to meet you again in Florida Supercon or whatever as far as I can if you come here again. We'll see what happens. Okay. We'll we'll have to start going to Vincent's okay? okay? Yeah, that's okay. funny. I'll be waiting for it. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. See ya.